What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Back at it with another bankroll challenge. Back in Vegas still at the win. Uh, here's an update of how well things are going so far in this bankroll challenge. And I need um, I need a little bit more to get it to my $5,000 goal. And here, I love this poker room here at the win. Everything's just nice. Games are always usually good. Uh, this is a random Tuesday night, so I'm not sure how well the games technically are, but uh, We'll see how much action there is. I'm sure I'll find a way to spice things up. But uh, yeah, let's just hop into the mix. Playing the 1 3, I think $500 max. We'll find out. And uh, if I can find a way to eke closer and closer or across the $4,000 mark, that would be a dream. We are playing a little bit of a bigger 1 3 game here today. At the win, $500 cap. And let's get into it. One of the first deals, I pick up 8 7 of hearts in plus one. I raise up the suited connector to $12 and only get the big blind to make the call. And we're running hot right off the bat with a flop of ace, eight, seven, rainbow. Bottom two pair, my opponent checks, and I'm definitely going to be betting this one. And I size up to $20, a little bit bigger, and my opponent calls. So just hoping he has an ace here. The turn is the six of clubs, brings in a backdoor flush draw on the board, a little bit more connected. Here, my opponent checks and definitely going to size up here close to the size of the pot as I'm either going to have a very strong or very weak hand here on this board. I bet out to $65 and uh, well, good news, more money that's potentially coming my way. He calls again, hoping for a clean river and I'm going to bet big. The river is now a jack. Seems like I'm only going to be losing to ace jack because if he had a better two pair, then he probably raises flop or turn. Anyways, he checks, and uh, I'm not going to be afraid of Ace Jack, not going to be afraid of losing out on money. I size to $150. Don't want to bet, you know, super large. You know, I think this sizing is reasonable to get any one pair of aces to call, and he does. I show my hand, and somehow I'm surprised he shows Ace King. Oh my goodness, what a premium that trapped me pre-flop and see a magical flop and what a great start to the session so far. I'm going to take it. The following spot is Jack-10 of clubs in plus one. This hand also, what I just learned recently, is called Asian Aces. Just so pretty to play and I raise up to $12. I get the cutoff and small blind to call. Three ways the flop comes, eight, five, three, two clubs and... I have a flush draw, but the board doesn't favor me as much, I don't think. So potentially could check raise here if someone were to oblige to bet, but action's going to check all the way around. The turn now comes a seven. Pretty cool to see a combo draw, and I'm certainly not going to check this one now. Let's see if I can win it with jack high. I bet out it's close to the size of the pot, $40, because I have such a strong hand, such a strong draw, and everyone just folds. So anticlimactic here, but still nice to find a way to win this pot with jack high. And this next hand, not as good as the other two cans. I have 10 deuce of clubs in the big blind. This is a four-way limped pot. All right, we're off to a flop, which comes six, seven, eight, two clubs. Somehow finding a way to have a combo draw here. With the combo draw, multi-way, let's build the size of the pot. I bet $10. Player to my left in under the gun who limped makes the call. And now there's a middle position player who raises to 35. All right here. Um, somehow this limped pot is turning into a much bigger one. I'm certainly not folding. I make the call and the player to my left makes the call as well. So all of a sudden, pot is certainly brewing here in the 1-3 streets. The turn is the queen of diamonds. A complete brick for me and on this board, I think now. Action checks to the middle position player and he sizes way up. Puts in a massive bet of 150. <sighs> Sadly, this is now just an easy decision. Um, and if you're going to think it's a call, that is not the decision that I'm ending up on. I'm getting way too bad of a price. The bet is way too big and I'm out of position. I can't really chase draws here for an over bet and uh, also could be dominated by higher flush draws with be it being multi-way. So whatever, I'm just going to fold here, save some money. And uh, this is just showing a little bit of discipline in the 1-3 streets. I can't gamble every single session. I didn't think this was a good time to do it. Speaking of gambling, I have queen eight of diamonds on the button, and there are two players who limp. 
I'm going to be very, very aggressive here. That's my strategy here in the 1-3 streets. I'm on the button and try to raise it up to $20. I only get one of the limpers to make the call and he has a pretty big stack, about $700 in front. So we're off to a flop of 556 rainbow. He checks it over to me and I would expect my opponent to whiff a lot on board textures like this. So I just decided to bet $15, hoping to get him to fold, but he comes along. All right, I've got absolutely nothing but two over cards. The turn is the seven of hearts. All of a sudden now brings in a backdoor flush draw, gives me an open-ended straight draw. And let's try to put some pressure on a pair of sixes or a small pocket pair. Unsure how wide his range is, but when he checked it over to me, I decided to bet again for 35 and this amount gets another caller. All right, let's try to win this one somehow. Let's bink a straight. The river is a jack. He checks again. I have queen high and a dream. I missed everything, but that's not going to stop me. To be honest, typically at 1-3, it's not advised to bluff a whole lot, but I think I've gotten myself into a spot where I kind of just have to. I think a jack can be a scare card versus his smaller pairs, and I don't think this opponent is going to hold on for three streets of betting with a small pair. It's a punt if he has a five, but let's go for it. I throw in a black chip for $100, and my opponent quickly folds, which is great news. So all of that, nice to arrive at the right decision here in this hand, which is a bluff, and I win this one with queen high. In the following hand, I pick up a very fun suited connector. You guys know I love playing these eight, nine of diamonds in the hijack. There is another early position limp, and I'm going to raise it up, isolate to $15 here. The big blind and limper decide on a call. Multi-way to a flop, which comes eight, six, four, two spades. Sitting with eight high boards, I'm loving it with top pair, but interesting when the early position limper leads out for $25 thinking that this is a pretty weird spot, to be honest, and the board really does favor him, but I'm never going to fold. So instead, I decided to raise for value. We are we are really trying to play some poker. I raise it up to $65. I think I can just get some information of how strong his hand is. Maybe I get value from draws. Maybe I see a cheaper showdown, but the big blind folds, and now the early position player asks if he can raise. When he asks the dealer if he can raise and then actually bumps it up to 125. Okay, facing a three bet on the flop, uh, you got it. I paid $65 for information. Seems like his hand is better than mine. I'm going to let it go. Kiss my $65 goodbye because I just don't think he's doing this with draws. Uh, it's a really small raise. Seems like he's doing it for value and I give him the pot. The following hand you're going to encounter is quite the doozy. I'm in the big blind and there's an under the gun $6 straddle on. There's a hijack limp for $6. Small blind makes the call for $6 and I peel pocket eights. Definitely good enough for a raise here, so let's go for it. I squeeze to $30 out of position and action folds to the hijack limper here. Who? Looks like he has other plans in mind because he three bets to $105. Action folds to me and I don't know what in the world this is. I think this player can be pretty tricky here as what I've seen in the past few hours so far. I also think there's a good chance that I just have the best hand a large percentage of the times. So I'm looking at my opponent's stack. He has just under $500 here, which is essentially under 100 big blinds with the straddle on. I'm playing out of position versus this stack. And I think if I call this raise, it's really, really hard to win. So let's play high variance. It's all or nothing. Hoping that it's a flip. I jam and he snaps. Oh, oh no. I ask if he has a big pair and my opponent nods. So it sounds like I just torched a bunch of money here. We're off to a flop, which comes all spades. I have a spade and he announces that he does not. So, oh my God, rooting for a spade and the river bails me out. Oh my God. To my surprise, he shows the red aces and they get cracked because I am a luck box and I have to thank the dealer for this one. 
I'd say certainly cracking aces is step number one to completing the bankroll challenge. Feeling pretty gross about it, but also just happy to win this one, of course, as I scoop in all of the red chips. And this is the fat chip porn you guys wanted to see in the 1-3 streets. I am clearly the red chip leader at the table now. After fighting that disgusting suck out with eights, let's keep the run good alive. I have ace deuce of diamonds in the small blind. There's a button player who opens up the action to $12. From my perspective, looks like he's a solid reg or pro at the 1 3 streets and certainly going to play against solid opponents differently. With this hand, I think it's a good candidate to 3 bet as a bluff sometimes, and I decide to go for it this time and raise it up to 50. My opponent makes the call with about $440 behind, so we're going to play a fun one here when the flop is 10-4 deuce to diamonds. Sitting with the combo draw, absolutely loving it, and I decide to put matters in my own hands. Not going to check this one, I decide to bet small, $35 to go, trying to bait him in. And when my opponent makes the call, we're off to a turn, hoping to improve here and just bet for value. The turn is a 5 which is not good for my immediate hand, but it seems good enough for my range. And I think this card's going to favor me a lot as over pair is gonna feel really good and less likely my opponent has a set. So I bomb it this time to $150. We are playing deep stack. So the intention is certainly to jam on the river and ultimately my opponent ends up folding. So nice to get this bluff through. There are some spots where you can bluff. You can play a little bit out of line like this hand here. But that's going to wrap up the session here at the 1-3 streets. Overall, a very successful day. All due to the highlight of cracking aces when I had 20% preflop. All right, guys. What a silly, silly, silly session. It's always nice to crack aces. It's hard to win a lot of money at 1-3, it seems like. I was in the game for $500, played for a couple hours. Uh, sucked out versus aces and that's like mainly the profit. I was out of the game for a thousand and seventy nine dollars Which means that is a profit of five hundred and seventy nine and uh, We cross over that 4k mark brings the total profit of this entire bankroll challenge to forty two hundred and thirty seven dollars in 15 sessions played <sighs> Finish line is is getting there. Uh, it literally does turn out to be really hard to make a uh, a lot. I mean, granted, I'm not playing like super high volume in hours. Obviously, not grinding 1 3 as hard as uh, other stakes, but uh, for the challenge and everything, man, getting close, getting close. Uh, one of the big things about like 1 3 uh, rake is relatively high for the blinds, which makes it difficult to uh, accumulate a lot of chips unless you play big pots. And you only get to run into so many big pots in a handful of hours. And luckily, I was on the right side of the big one today by sucking out in the 20 percenter. Uh, that's sometimes what it takes. But um, yeah, just crack aces. You'll make you'll uh, actually win money. But thanks so much for watching this video. I'm going to get out of here and uh, hopefully I can finish this out in one or two sessions. I said that last time and I ended up losing like $600, which was a big blow, but nice to rebound from it. And um, yeah, more poker to come. Happy December content is go <laughs> really pushing out a lot of content. So shout out to Carl for editing everything and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.